of every Persister play kit is worth it. In this review, I'm gonna look at the items included, our personal experience with them after having them for a year with originally a four-year-old, she's now five, and a two, now three-year-old, and how they compare to self-curate them with Amazon alternatives or Etsy dupes. And if you guys are new here, my name's Rachel from The Confused Mom. Welcome to my channel. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, and Montessori at home tips. And I have reviewed every single Love Every Play Kit to date and a lot of standalone products from them, which I will leave a link to that playlist here as well as in the description box below where you can also find links to Shop Love Every as well as the dupes I'm going to mention in this video. And a really exciting announcement um, as a thank you from Love Every for watching my videos and me making them for so many years without being asked. They actually offered me a discount code to share with you guys. So I will leave details to that in the description box below if you want to get started on your Love Every journey. What's inside the play kit? First off, we have a Montessori movable alphabet, which is this really nice round wooden board that holds two movable plastic letters. In true Montessori fashion, vowels are colored blue and consonants are colored red. And beyond being just a Montessori movable alphabet, it actually is a game. To play the easy version of the game, you'll use the blue cards, which is kind of like a letter matching game at that point as they're learning letter sounds and shapes and what that looks like. And then as your child has kind of mastered the phonics and what the different letter shapes look like, you'll move on to the red set of cards. It also has a dice which dictates which letter gets to be played on the card. And the ultimate goal is to use them with the next item in this play kit, which are Montessori object language pieces. These are really high quality small objects that match the words on the card from the previous game. As far as our personal experience with these items, which I'm go together, I talked about this in my video on mistakes to avoid when teaching toddlers or preschoolers how to read. They go through phases where they're super interested in mastering it and then maybe they pull back a little bit. That has definitely been my experience where there were periods where this went fairly untouched and then periods where she was obsessed with it, playing it for hours and hours on end, day after day throughout the week. And I think the only reason her interest even started to wane with that game after like three straight days of playing it for hours each day was because I would get very bored while playing it. And she could kind of tell my heart just wasn't in playing the game anymore, which in fact has been one of my greatest struggles in teaching my kid how to read is just some of the games and activities get a little boring after a while and don't hold my interest, which ended up, I think, spilling over to my kids. But I did find a solution to that, which I will be sharing next month. So make sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss that video. If you are in the same boat, struggling with games, struggling with creative ways to get your kid to read, I have something very exciting to share with you. But anyway, I'd say this is a it for sure. Like I said, I think her interest has only waned in it at times because I personally needed a break from it. She would go ahead and even play this by herself, but obviously and just ask me questions when she was getting stuck. Beyond that, the Montessori objects in this are so high quality and such a good size that my kids would even build magnetile houses and use the objects within the house. So like standalone pretend play item, as well as tracing item, which we'll talk about. As far as how it compares to dupes. Getting this at four, we had already introduced some other Montessori language activities. Already had a wooden Montessori movable alphabet. The quality of that was pretty cheap and splintery and flimsy. And I know that Love Everest uses plastic pieces, but honestly, I like them more. And then we also use a foam magnetic Montessori movable alphabet, which I do love that too. I've shared in that mistakes to avoid when teaching kids how to read video, different games and activities we've played around that. And as far as dupes for the Montessori objects, there are a ton that you can find on Etsy especially, but I'd say this one and this one are probably the most similar to Love Every's in terms of scale and quality. But with all of that said, for the DIYers and the cash strapped, this is something that you could buy a cheap Montessori movable alphabet. And then you can go ahead and make your own cards and dice and recreate your own version of this game using household objects. Next, we have the Draw, Trace, and Erase board. This is a really beautiful, and high quality dry erase board, I guess you could call it essentially. It's a wooden base, comes with a twist up, a 
crayon. And then you have this acrylic board that sits on top of two different little compartments. And the cool thing here is that those Montessori letters can actually fit in here. So you can build your own words and trace them directly on here. Or it comes with double-sided activity cards where you can go ahead and trace those. It has this little felt triangle eraser and a carrying bag, which makes it a great option if you're going to grandparents' houses, are going to be sitting at a restaurant or a waiting room for a long time. I don't love it for the car because it's so many pieces that could drop or fall down. But once you are at a destination that may not be the most fun for kids, this is definitely something worth pulling out. As far as our personal experience with it, I would say my daughter always liked this item, but never loved it. She found the felt eraser and crayon to be a little challenging to wipe off at times, but that is also her experience on traditional dry erase. So I guess you could say it's a good lesson in hand strength. But I think the real thing was by the time we got this, she was four obviously, we had already used different dry erase and wipe clean activities in the past. So it wasn't anything that was necessarily a new concept for her, which leads me to the dupes where there is nothing exactly like love at breeze you're never gonna find a board this beautiful or this like well done however it is something very easy and affordable to recreate so this book has been with us for a very long time the cover got ripped off but i will leave a link to it in the description and it is just a basic dry erase letter and number book it has different activities we have had this for many years even before we introduced it with a dry erase marker we would do it with our kids tracing with their fingers as just a book for them to flip through because it's super durable and sturdy my daughter used to have me read this to her before bed where we would say the different animals on the page just object recognition so we've had since my oldest was like a year and a half or two years old both kids use it obviously other than the front page being missing it looks phenomenal and they pull this out and work on it by themselves all the time and then the other thing that we do a lot of is if you ever have like those standard preschool workbooks we rip out the sheets and I have these little plastic sleeves and I give them to the kids in these which gives you a lot of freedom to adapt to whatever your child is most interested at that time. We had already been doing all of this prior to the draw race and trace board. I would say it does get used less often, which is part of the reason I said, if you were being choosy about which play kit to skip for this year, this is so easy to recreate. My daughter is kind of a bougie chick though, so she did like how pretty it was. <laughs> but moving on to the next item, which was a huge hit, it probably makes this the reason to buy this play kit, the Path Builder Marble Maze. And this toy is so much fun that I have locked myself in the closet and played with it by myself at times. Basically what it is, it's actually a spoof on one of my husband's favorite childhood games but it wasn't as cool as Love Avery's because Love Avery's comes with puzzle sheets for easy medium and hard challenge levels where you basically use the different color coordinated pieces to recreate the pattern on the puzzle sheet and it's a little bit tricky and it gets trickier as you move up the levels and then you have to actually work some gross motor skills and spatial planning skills because then you have to actually tilt the board so that the marble runs through the pack. Every single person in my house, everybody has loved this toy. In fact, when I was prepping for this video, I was sitting at my desk and my basically three-year-old was literally in the closet playing with this for 40 minutes straight. There is an item that makes this one worth it. It is going to be this because the dupes for it are not nearly as good as Love Every. Say most similar to Love Every, I found this one and this one. Each of these comes with either a card or a book that you can copy the maze picture, whereas Love Every's it's like built directly in. The reason I really don't like these compared to Love Every's is that they either use a situation where the board is slanted or you have to pull a tab and then they auto run. Whereas Love Every's has that added benefit and this was the thing we really liked about my husband's version from childhood where you actually have to manipulate the board to get the marble to run through it. This can be really fun. Love Every's is going to be one that is going to hold kids and adults attention for many more years years to come. Then those dupes, one of those quintessential love every must have items in my book. I would even go as far as to say it's one of their best items from this year. The next items are the calming circle and a breathing activity book that basically teaches you how to use the calming circle and teaches various breathing activities you can work on with your kids. And technically you could do some of them without the calming circle or with the calming circle. True love every fashion. Quality here is superb. It's beautifully done. The colors are vibrant and it is a nice little manipulative and fidget toy for kids who are feeling stressed or anxious or anything but calm. With that said, we never had much luck 
with it, particularly with my four now five year old, largely because she had already really at, by that age had her breathing techniques. She knew what to do. She did all the different breathing things long before this. She never felt a real use for it. My two year old, however, I did find it a little bit more helpful with him. And this applies to kids, not just two, but at any age, you know, when kids do something that they feel embarrassed about or ashamed of, oftentimes they will start not looking at you or they'll fidget with something or they'll get really silly. And that's their way of coping with the stress in their body. So when I've had to have more serious talks with him, I have found that handing him this fidget with while we're having this conversation directs things in a much more constructive way. So I definitely would say something better to introduce younger or to kids that don't already have breathing coping skills built out. However, my bigger issue with it and the reason why it's never been a huge hit in our family is that my kids primarily learned breathing techniques by watching me use them in my real life and it was too many steps for me to go and find that to then practice it in my real life to then have them model it later on. That could just be an us problem. But instead, the dupes, how I was always taught to teach kids breathing techniques back like in my therapy days were these breathing balls. And it's great because you can buy one or you can buy them in packs of two, three, or four. And you can make it like a morning circle time activity or an unwind at the end of the day activity where everyone has one and everyone's modeling one another. I just like the fact that when every single person gets a manipulative for this, makes it easier to teach it. That would be kind of my preference as far as like most similar to Love Every. This one on Etsy. And the book that comes in this play kit is Jilly and Jet, which is all about working through frustration using the calming circle. My kids didn't love this book, nor did they dislike it. It was pretty much just like a very neutral middle of the road book. I suspect it fell a little flat for two reasons. Number one, the tension point in this book essentially is that Jilly and Jet made some sidewalk art and then Storm comes and washes the art away. And I know that can be a geo graphical thing like maybe they don't live somewhere that often gets rain but by four four and a half years old is when this book comes it felt like kind of a silly premise by that age I'm sure they've dealt with sidewalk chalk disappearing enough times that they probably aren't getting frustrated it didn't feel very relatable to my kids I think a better version of this book would have been for them to do the sidewalk art at a playground and then go have a snack and then when they came back another kid had drawn all over it and then having to work through the frustration and disappointment appointment in that situation, which I think is just more relatable to a four or five year old. Second, the book ends up feeling a little long. My kids struggle to read the whole thing through. And I think that is because the tension point is so unrelatable because the book Charlie Learned Something New, which comes in the first play kit for four year olds is one of their favorite books. And it's just as long as Jelly and Jet, but they were hooked on her stress and what was going to happen next. Like they could see themselves in that story. With that said, it definitely inspired them to go get the calming circle out and follow along and use it more so in that sense the book did its job dupes for it i always say there's no books quite like love efforts featuring real people real situations i love what they've done with this four-year-old play kit where they added these little art graphics to the books to really show the insides on the outside or what's happening in the mind on the outside just so visually engaging and captivating but with that said as far as teaching kids about frustration tolerance and disappointment the Spot the Feeling books are always a solid option. And this book written by a child psychologist is also a decent alternative. And as always, Love Every comes with the play guide, which is basically your cheat sheet to your child at this age, as far as whether or not the Persister play kit is worth it. Do I think it's good play kit overall? Yes. If I were being critical and choosing to skip a play kit and really stretching my money's worth, this is the play kit I would skip in the four to five year old age range. When you look at financially self curating, you could do it for as little as $90 with some of the cheaper alternatives I mentioned, or it would cost as much as $147 with some of the more expensive alternatives. If it was a gift, I would still call it a win and I'd be super happy to receive it. And their quality is always superb. If, if you're looking for eco-friendly, non-toxic toys for your kids, like Love Every is always going to have you beat. So don't forget to head to the description box below, take advantage of that discount code and getting your Love Every subscription started. Feel free to drop your personal experience with this play kit in the comments to help other parents out especially if you disagree with me and maybe your kid absolutely loves some of these items and mine are just weird. Totally okay. Or if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification bell because I have some really exciting updates and things to share with you on teaching preschoolers how to read. And as always, my name's Rachel from Confused Mom. Have a good one.